did you have? 49. 49? You never lost a fight, did never you? Never lost a fight. There's only one fight that I know you lost. Who's that? And this fellow told me about it. Should I tell you? Yeah. Uh, we were visiting with him in Roma about a year or two before he died. Mario Lanza. Oh, yeah. Mario Lanza said he knocked you out once. He would have liked to, hi. He was a frustrated <laughs> fighter, a man that really enjoyed boxing. I've had many, many conversations with him, and he loved it, really. We used to have to show him our fight films over and over and over again. He believed that he was a strong, rugged, tough guy, and I guess he might have been. Uh, we fooled around a couple of times with the gloves on, but uh, I've never given him a chance to knock me out. Yeah, he sat in the backyard somewhere. Yeah, you know? I did. I worked with him. Really? The, yeah, I did. I right. taught him some, some things that, uh, that I used to work on, and he, he enjoyed it very much. He was a wonderful guy. Well, you tried to, to steal his act, too. You, didn't you do a, a nightclub act at the Shea Perry in Chicago with Jimmy Durante? <laughs> Almost. Oh, I, did you do it? No, I didn't. Almost. It was a funny thing that uh, we had gotten together. We had rehearsed the show in Cuba at the time. Jimmy was working in Cuba, and I went over there to visit with him, and we practiced a wonderful little uh, nightclub act, and I was so anxious to get involved with Jimmy Durante, who could uphold me and, and carry on in case I got weak in the knees. And then all of a sudden, my old manager, Alan Wilde, just wouldn't allow it, and he killed it, and one of the most sorriest things that ever happened to me. Isn't that strange? But most of the most of the champs, uh, or even the ball players now, some of the great ball players go in for the nightclub. There's a lot of good extra loot in it. The, not only that, uh, high, but it's show business. And you know, an athlete who has been before thousands and thousands of people enjoys getting out there again after it's all over and entertaining the people because, in a way, we're entertainers. And uh, I like to be around a group of people, and I, I feel comfortable in front of a lot of people. And so it's kind of a thrill to get back in the limelight in show business and rehash a lot of things. Plus, the loot is very good. It is, it is show business. You know, when you come out to fight, you just wear shorts, right? right? Yeah. Now, do you know on Broadway, uh, most people don't even wear shorts now? Is that right? Oh, strictly nudity. <laughs> well, you mean Fantastic. The, the hair. Hair, and there are others, too. And some of the movies, they're doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, one of the questions I ask when we're, we're talking to... to uh, show people saying or actors or actresses uh, do you mind working in the nude you know uh. you'd be surprised the answers you get <laughs> half of them you know wouldn't make any difference just don't care no i don't know what that does to the wardrobe mistress union you know what i'd hate to think of me coming out in the ring and wearing anything lighter than a pair of trunks yeah i would too <laughs> you couldn't tell whether the roar of the crowd came from <laughs> admiration or uh, shock uh you you once uh, told me in in a, in a well maybe seven, eight years ago, that what you'd like to do, you'd like to go to Moscow and challenge any Russian to go into a ring with you and use any, any form of fighting that he wanted to, karate or judo or boxing or wrestling, let him get as dirty as he wanted to, and you'd walk out of the ring and he'd be lying flat. You I, remember that? Yes, I do. And you know, that was kind of a goal of mine. I really did. When I was still fighting, I wanted very much to just to see how good I could do with just any man in a, in a country like, like Russia, for instance, where boxing is almost unheard of, or at least it was unheard of until the Olympics here this year. But in my early days, I enjoyed the rough sport of boxing, and in shape, really, I, I feared no man. And I wanted to just kind of prove it in Russia, where they didn't respect us, I guess. But you know, as a man gets older, he gets humble. And I'll tell you how, I'm 44, and I'm humble now. You were always, you were always a, a, a very, very shy, quiet guy, even at the very peak. As a matter of fact, some, some of the sports writers said that, that uh, when you went in the ring, you were a different person, because there you, you, were, you were mad at the world, represented by the one opponent. Were you? Very much. You know, my mother and father and my wife and all of the people that really knew me just couldn't quite understand it. They, they didn't believe it. You know, before a fight, hi, I could sleep two hours before a fight and talk about the fight and just absolutely have no fear about the fight itself and be calm and, and humble and all that sort of stuff. As soon as the bell rang, it was a completely different person going out there and I couldn't explain it except I just enjoyed combat. I just enjoyed the sport that I had learned so well and I had practiced so much that when the bell rang, I did a job. I could concentrate on the opponent like Arnold Palmer can concentrate on golf with all of that big crowd around him, I could concentrate on the opponent. You know, most of the times, I wouldn't even realize that there was a referee in the ring with us. And that's, you know, that's pretty good when you can go that far in concentration. So that the fight itself was strictly to prove myself as a fighter. I had to prove that I was a better man. But as soon as it was over, I felt sorry for my opponent, 
and I became uh, tender, if I may use that word, again, and had no uh, tough guy attitude. Strange thing, you know, I, uh, we, our friendship comes back to before you got the title. And I went to most of your title fights, and I'd sit up there as close to ringside as I could get. And uh, what, uh, what invariably happened was that uh, uh, you, would, you would get a, uh, take it. You take it on the chin, you take it on the neck, you take it all over. And it worried me. You'd start bleeding, and I'd say, there goes my friend Rocky. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the other fellow would get the same kind of sleep that you got before the fight. <laughs> He'd get it right there in the ring. Now, uh, didn't, uh, is there any uh, enmity between fighters after the scrap is over? Yeah, very much so, Hi. You know, I just came from Ezra Childs' testimonial. Ezra Childs has the dread disease, and we had a testimonial for him. And really and truly, I, I just was so happy to see all the fight, old-time fighters there who were paying their respect to a great warrior. And I had so much respect for Ezra Childs after my two fights with him. Just an abundance of, of, of feeling for him because of his great fights, his fighting spirit, and, and, and the fact that he wouldn't quit. He gave it everything he had. I just can't tell you how much I respected him. And I've done that with many of the boys that I fought. And I think that between fighters, we have that respect for one another to show that, uh, that there is feeling. You know, I guess it's like two lawyers who have a a tough case for weeks and weeks and weeks, a lot of preparing and a lot of debating. And finally, when it's over, they're eating together and discussing the next uh, case. I, I think fighters are the same as liars, really. Not that educated, and they don't get that much money, but uh, have, they have the same attitude. No hard feeling, then? No hard feelings with any of my opponents. In the early days, when the newspapers used to build up the opponent's story about saying, ah, that Marciano, he's a bum, he couldn't do this and he couldn't do that, I would get mad. And I had a terrible feeling going out there after some of those fellas. But then I realized that it was build up and everything was promotion. Uh, actually, the fighter is mostly a nice guy. I can only name you a couple of them. And they're in other divisions who aren't nice guys.